Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels, and you guessed it, folks. We are still going through the FDA executive summary for April the 24th, 2014. Get ready to move on to extinction-based treatments. Now, before we get into everything here, just a few disclaimers. First off, the link to this document, as well as the link for the petition to shut down the Judge Rotenberg Center, is going to be left for you in the petition. If you want to either A, follow along, or B, want to make sure to sign that petition. So please just click the little down arrow and you'll have access to all of that. Number two, some of the topics that we go over when we are discussing the JRC include torture and is not really good for children so please make sure when you are watching these videos to have on your headphones if you have small children around all right folks without further ado we are going with extinction based treatments and as always folks in case i fumble on any any of these scientific terms or stumble over my words i apologize in advance okay we got that covered. So, not, not, yeah, let's not even talk about the web sign that calls itself that. Moving on. <clears throat> Here. Yay, a little less blinding. Okay. So, extinction based treatments. Extinction is defined as no longer providing reinforcement for a response that was previously reinforced. By terminating the contingency between response and reinforcement, extinction procedures result in a decreased probability that this response will occur again. Extinction is a common component of many behavioral interventions and has been demonstrated to be highly effective in the treatment of SIB and other maladaptive behaviors. Thompson et al. 2003. In addition, extinction is shown to be a crucial component in the efficacy of other interventions, such as functional communication training. What they mean by extinction, folks, is essentially complete removal of the behavior, which I find a little bit naive. The, when people rely on ABA, <clears throat> what they're wanting... <clears throat> is for a particular behavior to completely go away and the autistic to never use it again. Fortunately, however, that's simply not how things work in the real world. I get stressed out, guess what? The hand flapping, the hand twisting, and meltdowns, the head banging, that still all occurs. There's no way to entirely take away what happens during a meltdown. But I figured I'd go ahead and cover that because with autistics, a good majority of self-injurious behavior does come during meltdown, which I hate to tell all these Karens and research this, but that never really completely goes away. So that in mind, we'll go ahead and move ahead here. SIB, an aggressive behavior, is often maintained by negative reinforcement in the form of escape from environmental setting or the demands of a specific task, remaining seated in the classroom, etc. By engaging in either self-injurious behavior or aggressive behaviors, the individual is often removed from the setting, which is inadvertently negatively reinforces and maintains self-injurious behavior and aggressive behavior. To eliminate and extinguish this behavior, eliminating the escape contingency has been shown to be an effective treatment. Okay, here we go again. Here we go again. So, let me explain this to researchers and the other idiots who don't seem to freaking get it. Okay? So, they believe that sometimes we engage in self-injurious behaviors because we believe it's going to give us what we want, such as escaping the classroom. Here's the thing. Remember what I just told you a moment ago 
that with most autistics, nonverbal or not, that self-injured behavior comes from, it comes from meltdown. When you are in meltdown, and I speak from personal experience here when I tell you this, you're not thinking logically at that point. You're not harming yourself or that desk or that person by accident because you're trying to get out of the classroom. All reason has gone at that point, okay? You're at your most primal animalistic state, okay? There are no comprehensive thoughts, words, that are running through your mind at that time. So, with that being stated, if you are in meltdown and you are being self-interest, how in the world would we... uh, You get what I'm saying. If a person is harming themselves in meltdown, they do not at that moment have the capacity or the ability to engage in behavior in order to remove themselves for something they don't like. That's not how it goes. When you are being forced to sit still in class and you can't self-regulate, what you are going to get is a meltdown, okay? There is not this gigantic motive behind it, is what I'm trying to tell you. All motives and comprehensive logical thought is gone at that point. Just wanted to clear that up. But moving on. Self-injurious behavior and aggressive behavior is often maintained by negative reinforcement in the form of escape from environmental setting or the demands of a specific task, remaining seated in the classroom. You're an idiot. Okay, we already read that paragraph. Moving on. A form of extinction frequently used for severe forms of self-injurious behavior are maintained by sensory reinforcement is protective equipment. Protective equipment, helmets, face shields, and gloves frequently is recommended for dangerous forms of self-injurious behavior that could result in tissue damage or severe injury. Protective equipment, however, is also used as a method of reducing behavior maintained by sensory reinforcement. Dorsey et al. 1982. That's not how it works. This is not how any of this works. (sighs) I can tell you this. You can tape all the gloves on me and protective gear you want. If I'm going to melt down, I'm going to melt down. And when I do go into an autistic step, There is nothing anyone around me can do. When I have full-born snapped, yeah, there's no stopping me. There is no stopping me. There is no me looking at gloves and going, okay, okay. No. At best, I have managed to get into myself a five minute window when I know I'm going to stab and I know I cannot hold it down. The best I can do is get myself into an area where I am away from everywhere else before it sets off. That's it. No gloves, no throwing a blanket on me, none of that is going to stop, stop it once I've snapped. But anyways, I'll go ahead and move forward here. The rationale behind the use of protective equipment is that if the self-injurious behavior functions to provide positive reinforcement in the form of sensory experiences, then protective equipment serves as an extinction procedure by blocking that positive reinforcement. Oh my God, these people are idiots. These people are complete idiots. Oh my God. Again, what did I just say? There is no rational mind. Okay? This is not about us suddenly getting what I want and everything's okay again. This is not a toddler throwing a temper tantrum. This is a meltdown. There is no logical thought process behind it once the snap happens. 
I'm just saying. Some of us, as we get older, we get a little bit better about recognizing the signs. Sometimes we can do things to intervene, such as, by the way, hand flapping, rocking, things that are self-regulating to keep us calm, to keep us from going into meltdown. <sighs> swear to God. Moving on. However, a potential adverse event associated with extinction procedures is the risk of the so-called extinction bursts, which is an upsurge, particularly in the early stages of intervention of the actual undecided or unwanted behavior. If this upsurge in behavior poses a danger to the individual and or others, then the extinction program is not a feasible option. It's a meltdown! Jesus! Um, moving on. Moving on. 4.4.23 Punishment-Based Treatments Over the past decade, the consensus in the scientific literature has been that the initial behavioral intervention should be the least restrictive option available that still results in behavior reduction, Fox 2005. Although the first choice of behavioral interventions typically is the selection of reinforcement and extinction-based strategies, there are times when more invasive methods are necessary to gain control over dangerous behaviors, such as SIB and aggressive behavior, especially when behaviors have the potential to cause serious injury to the self or others. Ms. Shelby, 2008. Punishment is defined as the presentation of adverse stimulus or the removal of positive stimulus contingent on engaging a target behavior such as SIB. Oh my God. I'm going to try not to rant. I'm going to try just to read straight through it. Just know I won't review this because I will blow my lid. Although the use of punishment procedures is questionable with respect to its effectiveness in treatment of SIB and aggressive behavior, you don't say! Fox et al. 2005 has argued against entirely dispensing with this form of aversive treatment. Some individuals who have developmental and or intellectual disabilities engage in problem behaviors of sufficient severity to threaten their own lives. Eliminating the use of aversive interventions in these individuals may limit available treatment options. Fox et al. 2005. So, in order to get them to stop harming themselves, we are going to punish them, which will end up harming them. Can anybody see the logic here? Because I don't. I never have. I will never get it. It will never make sense. Just saying. The key feature of use of punishment and behavior intervention is that the punishing stimuli, water mist, or event, time out of positive reinforcement, must be strong enough to override the maintaining reinforcement for the behavior. Iwata et al. 1990. Again, oh my god, you really don't get it. They really don't get it, folks. They act, they're acting, we're choosing to do this. Like, the basically bringing our minds down to the point of animals and that we are choosing to engage in that behavior. This is not what's going on. Ugh, say it again. Behavior is communication. It's communication. And instead of doing these 10,000 types of intervention, what should be going on is to find out what they are trying to communicate to you through their behavior. This is not the case of the toddler throwing a temper tantrum because they didn't get their way. Something is triggering that behavior. Something's causing the meltdown, which, by and large, we do engage in self-injurious behavior during that time. Because we are not ourselves in that moment, okay? Does that make sense? 
when you are in meltdown, when you are in snap mode, you are not yourself. You are not controlling your faculties. At least that has always been the case with me. So, them using some type of punishment on me would not have changed anything and just would have been cruel. So, moving on, since they don't seem to get it. <sighs> Several punishment methods have demonstrated some degree of effectiveness in individuals who have autism. For example, SIB is related to reinforcement in the form of contingent attention. Time out from positive reinforcement has proved moderately successful in decreasing maladaptive behaviors. Harris Ersner Hirschfeld, 1978. Another punishment procedure used in the treatment of SIB is contingent physical access exercise. That wouldn't have worked on me either. I actually enjoy exercise, so... Contingent physical exercise consists of having individuals engage in brief physical activity immediately after an occurrence of its target behavior. Who said all 1980? I agree with it being useful to calm someone down. I do it regularly for that reason. But I don't see it as punishment. It's something that I choose to do, so... Okay, Karen... This procedure originally was designed for use with aggressive and disruptive behaviors, but recently has been applied to treatment of self-interest behavior in individuals who have autism and intellectual impairment. The physical, the punishment procedure has received the most debate is physical restraint. Gee, I wonder why. Physical restraint can range from complete immobilization on a bed, for example, to limiting the mobility of specific body parts, e.g. rigid arm sleeves. Based on the limitation of movement provided by physical restraints, this option may be viewed as the most restrictive behavioral intervention. Furthermore, the application of physical restraints can make it difficult or impossible for the individuals to engage in appropriate adaptive behaviors. Despite these concerns, the pragmatic use of physical restraint in severe instances of SIB has been shown effective. Yeah, if someone's holding you down, yeah, if your limbs can't move, I concede. That will help with self-interest behavior. It's not going to help with the psychological damage you're doing by strapping someone immobile, but who cares about that, right? <sighs> For example, rigid arm restraints have been used in many studies to reduce frequency of SIB, especially hand-to-head. SIB. Use of the strange is not usually considered a last resort intervention. The goal is to fade the use of restraints gradually over time so that the individuals remain under stimulus control of restraints while not actually wearing them. Oh gee, let's cause them PTSD with restraints. That'll teach them. Jesus Christ, I live in the dark ages. We sure this is from 2014? The use of physical restraints should be conducted in a systematic manner with careful consideration being given to providing the least amount of restraint necessary to reduce harm while inhibiting adaptive behaviors as little as possible. Wallace et al. 1999. All right, folks. I'm going to go over this last one and we'll go ahead and head out for today. This is 4.4.2.4, Function Communication Training, FCT. FCT is a procedure in which socially appropriate communicative behavior is taught to replace the less appropriate behavior. The operant function of behaviors such as aggression is identified, reinforcement is provided for the alternative response, and the behavior is placed on extinction. The new behavior becomes a more effective means to achieve the desired outcome, thus the necessity to emit the less appropriate behavior is diminished. FCT empowers the individual to regulate the delivery of the reinforcer, thereby exerting control over their environment. 
Several studies have demonstrated the effectiveness of FCT in reducing aggression, especially when included as part of a comprehensive multimodal treatment plan. Baithwaite and Richdale, 2000, Grace Al, 2009, Thompson et al. 1998, and Ringdahl et al. 2009. Okay, so I went ahead, covered that, and did a little bit of ranting, because with extinction-based treatments and punishment treatments, what's bad about them is the fact that people are still refusing to look into what's causing the behaviors. People would just rather assume that we are acting like toddlers or acting like animals as opposed to actually put in the actual work, figuring out what's triggering the behaviors and then take care of the problem. Just saying. Now, that being said, when I am in meltdown, by the time I've I've snapped, it's already too late. I can tell you that right off the bat. However, even in meltdown, that is a communication of a sort. It means something had to have set me off. What sent me into that meltdown? In my case, more often than not, it's either too much time exposed to a certain sensory, which is causing me a great deal of physical pain and physical discomfort, or it can be simply being too overwhelmed with too much stress, too many emotions, all kidding me at once. So that's usually the main things that happen right before I go in the meltdown. And like I said, over the years, I have learned quite a bit of control. I do meltdown on occasion, but those years are far and long in between. And I let people know my work, whoever I'm working with, if I'm out in public with somebody, they know what factors in what might set me off. If I show any signs, which with me, it's clenched fists, it's a clenched jaw, it's when I do, usually when I twist my ponytails, it's just like this. But if I start twisting it to the point that my hands start going red and it looks like the circulation is starting to be cutting off in my fingers, which they would call that self-injurious behavior. That is a sign that something is going on and that I'm about to snap. In which case, the person, whoever I am with or the workplace will know to intervene. At that point, I can still communicate to I can tell them at that point what the issue is, and usually it gets resolved. So, just wanted to go into that. Now, all that being covered, I don't want to add a, another video at the end of this today. I think we covered things pretty well. So, we're going to go ahead and close on out of here for this afternoon. Now, as always, folks, before we go, we don't get that many views on this channel, especially for these videos. The few views that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So if you could, folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this afternoon. And as always, we here at Spilling Tea, we do hope you have... A good one. Bye-bye.